So today we're going to take a look at something that is being requested very, very often by our clients. And that is the ability to kind of like combine telephony and reporting and deep reporting all in one like simple workflow. And this is what I'm going to show you today. Simple concept, but there's a few moving parts. So strap in. If you're new here, hi, my name is Alex. And here on this channel, we talk about anything and everything regarding automation, Airtable, AI, reviews of different new systems and everything in between. So yeah, without any further ado, let's get stuck in. Okay, so the big idea, generally speaking, is that I need to start dialing and I'm basically dialing clients or potential clients and I'm going to be tagging said clients with the outcome of that conversation. Now, I've got air call for Windows in front of me and I'm going to start dialing this new client of mine. Basically, this is Amazon's phone number. Of course, it's not a client, but essentially I'm going to call and I'm going to tag that call and you'll see how all of this stuff happens in real time. So I'm just going to start the call. You'll immediately see how that is going to appear over here. There we go. And right now, this is just a call that has been created. I can go ahead and tag it straight away. And you can see that the call is in progress. But let's just finish this call with this client and let's just tag it. So let's say this was converted and sold. Done, close, and we're ready to start dialing. You'll see that now, after a few seconds, this will be updated, there we go, with the status of that call and how it went. Now, if I jump into my reporting, you'll see that here in my record count, if I refresh the data, it will immediately have, well, hopefully, <laughs> there we go, it will have updated the stats of how many calls I took within this time range, how the different agents have performed and a lot more. Of course, there's like a pipeline and all of that sort of thing. So yeah, I'm going to show you how to set this up. It's really, really straightforward. You really don't have to be a brainiac to do this. So let's do it. So first things first, air call. Let's talk about how to create that connection between Airtable and air call. And then we're going to talk in a different section of the video about the connection between Airtable and Google Looker Studio. So first thing that you need to do is obviously sign up for air call. There is a link down below where you can sign up. There's also a need for us to create a make scenario. And really, I promise you is extremely straightforward. As you can see, the make scenario basically deals with events, like it's watching our calls and depending on two types of events, and those are call created or call tagged, it will then proceed with creating that call. And all I'm doing is I'm basically storing that call data inside of Airtable. It could be Google Sheets, it could be any kind of database that we can right into using API. But yeah, all I'm really storing here is the call ID, the duration of that call, the tag. Probably when you're just creating that call, there isn't going to be a duration and there isn't going to be a tag, but I'm still mapping it anyway. Who the agent is, who I'm calling, when was the call started, when was it answered? Again, something that's probably not there at the time of creating that call. And also the time the call ended. I've just started. So it's not going to be there, but it's still mapped. That's it in terms of the creation part. Then we are dealing with the labeling. So as soon as something gets labeled, we want to act. And we basically, first and foremost, perform a search because I want to search for that call ID because I want to know which record in my list of calls I want to update. So all I'm doing here is I'm saying, okay, my list of calls, the formula is call ID equals call ID that we get from our event and limit one. Then we have one or two scenarios. We might have a case where we don't find that call for some weird reason and a case where we do find that call. In the first case where we don't find that call, we simply create that record, essentially copy pasting this element this module down here. If we need to update the call, 
because we found it, again, the mapping is absolutely the same. We're just using an update, a record module, but the rest of it is exactly mapped in the same way. We're just filling in the missing gaps, basically. So now that we've covered how we get data in real time from Aircall into Airtable, let's discuss how we now can take that data from Airtable and have it land in Google Looker Studio. Actually, it's quite easy. So one of my favorite tools of all time is sequin.io or sequin, 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 whatever. So as soon as you log into sequin and I urge you subscribe to them, they are a fantastic tool. All you have to do is just add a sync, choose Airtable. There's other things that you can sync in and out of, but yeah, choose Airtable, choose credentials. I think it's this one that I need, but then you need to choose your base. Let's just choose staging. Rate limits are fine. Choose the right table and then new sequin database. It is advised that you use a new database connection. So you can basically set up a database somewhere else in like the Google cloud or something like Superbase, and you can set up the connection here that is advised. But for the intents and purposes of the demo, sequin database is all you really kind of need and then just press create. Once you've done that, the sync will be created and all you really need at this point is to get your hands on the connection instructions, which are these bad boys over here. Now, of course, we've made sure that the data is blurred out, but this is what you will essentially need in order to create a connection inside of Looker Studio. How do we create this? very easy. I've already created my report, but let's just say that you're starting off from scratch. Create a new Looker report. Go first and foremost to add data. From here, search for Postgres. There we go, PostgreSQL. And then just input all of the data that you need to input. Then there is going to be another little place where you'll need to select the table. And in our case, the table is called calls and then basically there's going to be one final step to connect the two and that's that you will have connected your Airtable database via sequin to google looker studio so yeah that's it in terms of the connection stuff let's see what we can do with looker studio Okay, so here we are in Looker. Now, if you're new to Looker, you're in luck. It's one of the easiest things out there to create reports and dashboards on. Uh, also, it's free, almost a no brainer, at least for us, when it comes to creating these dashboards. Where do you begin? First and foremost, you need to add a chart. The way that I like to start this is by just creating a table and that will just bring data in. Now, it is important to note that you can then turn this table and I don't know where to place it, but essentially you can turn this table into something else. But the reason why I'm suggesting that you create a table is because you want to make sure that data is correct as it is in Airtable. It's the same in a Google Looker Studio. It's good to compare them because they sometimes they don't fully sync and you need to make sure that you're doing the right thing. So uh, what do I want to talk about? First and foremost, just begin with a table and start turning that thing into anything else, but begin from a table. Like you've seen here, all of these other modules that I've created, they all began their life from a table. So first and foremost, you can use like these highlights that I've used up here. Those typically summarize things. For instance, we have one column here called duration, and that is the duration of the call in seconds. So within Looker, you can set this duration instead of it being the data type of number, you can set it to be duration. And then you say, okay, this duration is actually in seconds. And then you visualize it in this beautiful little way. Now here, let's say I have a record count and this is just a basic record count, but I also have included a filter. Let's take a look at what that filter is. And the filter is count the converted soul, right? So basically I have four records that are converted sold. Now you might say, Alex, I also want it to look great. In that case, let's just close it and I can change 
this record count and I can call it something like number converted slash sold, something like that. Then I can also have like a little comparison range. So this could be like a previous period. And what this means is that it will give you the comparison of this period compared to the previous seven days. And it will like show you this little arrow and give you like a percentage change, which is fantastic. So you can play around with a lot of these different concepts, but generally speaking, it's an extremely easy thing to do. Start playing with this. Now you can also have one of the crucial things, you can have filters or controls, and you can add them through this little dropdown here called add control. And as you can see, we've got a bunch of different ones. The ones that I typically use, it's the date range control and a drop down list. Now drop down lists basically help you with filtering based on a particular type. So let's say converted sold. Let's say I want to filter the whole dashboard just by converted sold. And here I can see the performance between Alex and Gary. And I can see that Alex sold three. I can see that Gary sold one. You know, you're filtering the whole dashboard just based on that one parameter or you can add an extra one, for instance. Hopefully that makes sense. There's so much to talk about in terms of Looker. I don't think one video is enough. Let me know down in the comments if you want me to do a, like an in-depth setup of Looker. The most important thing is to get the data there and ultimately then the world's your oyster to start exploring this whole big platform that is Looker. So that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We're trying desperately to reach 1000 subscribers on the channel. So if you can help us reach that goal, that would be absolutely amazing. Thank you very much just ahead of time. So yeah, that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one. Don't forget to leave a comment whether you like this or not, or you want me to do more. Thanks. <laughs>